All right, let's see what was sent into my P.O. box today. Looks like a t-shirt. Okay, all right. Playing Minecraft in a cave looking for diamonds. Uh, what does it say? That's funny. I'm in the same cave looking for miners. So Dream in my mind is like the, the PR guy. He wants to always have a clean image, hence why he was always apologizing to his fans back in the day for things like the war cry on stream and stuff like that. When he didn't really do anything wrong, but he, you know, he instantly cowered to his like, fan base. But for years now, there have been rumors about allegations regarding Dream just floating around. Like once in a while, I would hear a murmur about it, see a tweet about it, but it never really went anywhere. The evidence or lack thereof was not properly compiled. So as far as I'm concerned, this dude is innocent until proven guilty. Now, the only comprehensive video I've seen about this is from Lanza. He's a commentary channel and he did a pretty good job of summarizing the story overall. If you want to see it more in depth, you can watch his video, but I am going to like re-summarize the events of his video here. The story goes that a girl going by OxyClean on Twitter came out about her experience with Dream the day after he revealed his face to his audience. She says he showed his face to her when she was a minor. She shows a few screenshots that look like cringy flirting. I haven't seen any proof of illicit material exchange at all in these DMs, but from what I've seen, she never implied that happened either. It's all just like cringy flirting. But it's hard to tell what the allegation even is here. Like is a 20 year old guy talking to a 17 year old girl grooming? I would say probably not. And her intention with coming out seems to be more to embarrass him than share a traumatic story of how she was victimized. Now, there could be more here that hasn't been shared. There could be more information. Uh, what she posted herself was pretty limited, and I'd be open to my mind being changed. But even here in her thread, she alludes to rumors about Dream talking to 13 or 15 year olds, which would be absolutely insane, groundbreaking, ground shattering, and that definitely would be grooming, but she has no proof, right? She has literally no proof, and she never posted proof anywhere, right? And I've never heard an account of someone that young coming out. I haven't. Now, to be clear, Dream and OxyClean definitely messes. Okay, but as for if he did anything wrong from what I've seen it doesn't seem that way A lot of people will point to a power imbalance and to be clear power imbalances do exist For example dream is a famous rich YouTube guy and this oxyclean girl is presumably not an e-celeb She's like a normal person or as normal as you can be when you're a dream fan But the existence of a power imbalance only matters if there's an abuse of that power like pressuring someone to do things They don't want to do and from what I can tell dream knew her age He didn't see her age as an issue and there was no no pressure going on whatsoever. There wasn't like some kind of weird, hey, baby girl, I'll make you famous if you do this for me. Like nothing like that happened. They consensually messaged. It's flirty and it's cringe, but it isn't nothing to hold against either person as something with malicious intent. And implying other things like the 13 or 15 year old doesn't make your claim look any good without any hard proof. It really muddies the waters and makes it look out to be somebody who had malicious intent when revealing all this information. But this wouldn't be the end of it, okay? Another thread came out by someone named RuPaul's Drag Race Plays Roblox. Great name, bro. Fire. Amazing. Internationally known. And this thread included a user named Amanda claiming that when she was 17, Dream sent her graphic images of himself and accused him of breaking the law. Now, there does seem to be some proof that she knew him and they talked, and she ended up posting a ton of TikToks to try and, like, prove her story, right? Hi, I am not happy to be making this video, but I'm Amanda, and you might know me as one of the girls that was groomed by Dream. I do not blame anyone for not believing me. I wouldn't believe it either. I was a Dream stan, and that is why this happened. The Instagram DMs go from September 23rd, 2020, up until the beginning of January, when he added me on his Snapchat. The rest of the TikToks linked here basically are her going through Instagram to show that the messages are real and they were in fact in contact with each other. I don't know how to make you guys believe that this is real, but this is his account. This like this is the dream account. This is him. You hit messages, it's him. You hit the top here, it's him. There's no editing this. This is real sh I DM'd him in the end of 2020 telling him how much of of like a supporter I have been and how much he makes me happy. And it started off very wholesome. We get down here to January. He tells me to add him on Snap, Dream Clay. He sent me a picture of his penis and he sent me a picture of him nutting to me. I clearly sent him stuff as well. I'm not responding to bullshit comments. You believe me or you don't. 
Now, these tweets would get a lot of responses, including people being confused as to what the ages here actually were. I'm all for supporting the victim, but if you were sexting and didn't stop, or say you weren't wanting this kind of relationship, isn't that on you? You said you were 17. At that age, you should know what you want, right? How did he groom you if you sent stuff willingly? Also, you went to Orlando and didn't say he told you to go, and if you didn't want to meet him to do sexual things, couldn't you have just said no? What exactly was the grooming? What exactly was the pedophilia? Please, other commenters, feel free to correct and inform me. Also, just want to include ages and dates specifically the first insta text date and the first snapchat text date obviously she ended up stating that she lied about the age she told him and the age on her bio are you for real how are you going to hold a at the time 17 year old victim accountable over a 22 year old man be so serious and seek help he was 19 girl january 17th dream was 23 he was 23 calling a 17 year old gorgeous af are we talking when they first started texting or snap or what? Yes, and she was 16 when he added her on snap. I don't know how old you are, but a 22 slash 23 year old influencer adding a 16 year old fan on Snapchat and texting her the way he did is not okay. Wasn't she lying about her age though? So that straight up is on her. You should just never lie to people, especially if you plan to get close about your age. Now with all of this discourse going on at the time, it's, it's a good time to just get the record straight on what we know versus what we don't know. On September 23rd, 2020, this girl messages Dream sending him a nice message. He says thank you. Moving over to January of 2022, she adds him on Snapchat and this is allegedly when the conversations took place. It goes on for one month. To maybe February 10th is the time frame where we were texting. At some point in August, she tells him she's in Orlando and allegedly this is when he suggests that they hook up and, and, they, and they make plans to. But keep in mind they never actually had sex. I informed him that I was coming to Orlando in August and it was suggested that we meet up and have sex. I was either going to have him come to my the resort I was at or he was going to pick me up and bring him to his house. He told me that he has a chest full of toys that he was going to use on me. And to top it all off, he blocked me after seeing my tweet. You want evidence for that? Here it is. He blocked me. Gone. Now the issue with this once again is determining how old this girl was when they actually met. Whether it's 16, whether it was 17, or even 18, and even beyond that, it's possible there are conversations that happened at some point where she did lie that we don't know about. I'm not accusing her of lying right now because I don't know what happened, but like I have to have this possibility open in my mind because, you know, I just don't know what happened. This is all behind the scenes. There's still a lot of DMs we haven't seen. And Dream to this day maintains his innocence. For him, with how famous he is, to think that he could get away with lying about something like this continually would be extremely insane. And I, and I know everyone's going to bring up like the Minecraft cheating thing, but for years on this, he has maintained his innocence. He has not backed down. He has not really changed his story. And so from my perspective, it's like for him to be lying, it would be one of the greatest like catches in all of YouTube history. It would be, it would be mind blowing. Okay. Now this girl did go on to say that she lied about her age online, basically to use Twitter when she was underage. And she explains that here. I didn't lie about my age to any of you, not once during this whole thing. You're reaching to find any reason to hate me. I lied about my age while making an account for Twitter years ago. To be for real, that tweet had no likes because I'm a normal human. I haven't said one lie, not one. Now with all this happening, Dream wanted to respond and he did so with a twit longer. It's always a good time when, when we get a twit longer, boys and girls. It's like 8 a.m. in the morning right now. And this is about to get my blood flowing, guys. This is my Black Rifle Company coffee or whatever. This is my freaking alpha brain, okay? I'm about to be activated AF. I'm sorry for the late post and reply. I know it's been overwhelming and the uncertainty is horrible in situations like this. I've been in a ton of scheduled meetings for the first time in my life this week and have had so little time to check the internet that I actually excused myself to use the bathroom during a meeting to check what was happening online. But I'm trying to write this post before my flight to get truthful information out there. Wait, did he say fight or flight? Hold on. I actually need to, I actually need to figure this out. Wait, he did say fight. Is there like a boxing match going on? What's, what's the deal with this. <laughs> is Dream, is Dream gonna box his victims? That would be fire. I would watch that. I'm going to be extremely specific and straightforward as it's a sensitive topic that I'm taking seriously and clarify on what's true and what isn't. The best thing I can do and what I want to do is always be 100% transparent when it comes to something as important as this. Yesterday, a thread was posted that had screenshots of Twitter DMs from me in 2020. I believe these DMs are real. In these DMs, there are no inappropriate comments whatsoever. It was just a friendly conversation. In these screenshots, them being 18 years old is mentioned in their 
bio, and I also very clearly asked them for their age. I did not act inappropriately with this person, and any attempt to equate these messages to grooming is not only disgusting, but it is insulting to victims who actually experience grooming and still have trauma as a result. Part of this thread includes cringy, flirty text messages, again, when they were 18, that were supposedly from me, because it says that it's from their contacts when they go to my TikTok. This is impossible since I use a Google Voice number on my TikTok account, which doesn't have the ability to iMessage. The other information is false, and this is unfortunately blown up to something that it simply isn't. Regardless, she was 18 years old and had 18 publicly available in her Twitter bio. So this first part of the tweet longer is focused on, on the OxyClean girl, but as Lanza points out, there is a moment within this tweet longer that doesn't really make sense. There is a DM where she says that she's 18 soon, not 18 already, uh, which is a little bit of a contradiction from what Dream says. Now, with that being said, Dream claims that some of these messages are actually fake, so maybe there's more to the story here than, than we're getting, really. He says he asked for her age, which is true, and she replies she was under 18. But Dream doesn't mention this message at all in the entire twit longer, and instead just says, oh, she said she was 18, and her Twitter bio says she was 18. It's strange that he wouldn't admit he kept talking to her after figuring out she was under 18 despite clear evidence of that being out there, but whatever. And now we get to the part regarding Amanda, the TikTok girl. The second thread had Instagram DMs from me, again, having friendly, normal conversations and nothing inappropriate. I believe these messages are real as well. Once again, she was 18 years old, says she was 18 years old, and even had a boyfriend while she was friendly with me. This being warped into me being a groomer and the fact that she is and was 18 is scary and sad and a huge reason as to why it's so hard to interact one-on-one -on -one with anybody online as a creator, especially people from within your communities. I did not engage inappropriately with her, and anything said otherwise is completely fake. As far as I've seen, she was involved with leak twit, and so was the first poster's boyfriend friend, which seems to be a trend in situations like these. But it's mostly been contained to their side of the internet other than during big moments like the face reveal or major streams and events. Having such a deep obsession towards someone to look deeply into their family, friends, and personal life, or making up relationships or friendships in your head is one of the biggest reasons parasocial relationships can become so dangerous. It's also one of the reasons why creators need to be as responsible as they can be and be careful when they interact with anybody. I've always done my absolute best to make sure that no one is ever uncomfortable with the way that I treat them, publicly or privately, and make an effort to make amends if I ever do something that someone doesn't like. I have also always made sure to have someone else have access to my public Snapchat, and in 2020, had them completely run the account while sending me art and cool messages before discontinuing it for a while. As for why I think this is happening now, I recently made the decision to not use my old Snapchat and to make a new Snapchat that I only have the people that I'm actually friends with and actively talk on, and this seems to have potentially struck a chord with people that I just casually talked with for not talking to them anymore. One of the reasons I made this decision is because someone I knew when I was first making content completely lied about how close we were, and use friendly DMs to tie into their unhealthy fantasy. I have almost completely stopped replying to DMs from fans, random people, and old friends due to situations like this out of fear from stuff that has happened in the past to my friends and those close to me. My team has had access to my social accounts from as long as I could remember in an effort to always stay on the side of caution given the size of my platform and inevitable, falsely spread situations like this. This has all become so much more real and scary now that my face is out there for people to see, and I need to address this all. I will also, based on your advice, pursue legal action towards people using my name to spread disinformation or those that are misrepresenting facts, lying, faking things, or falsely abusing my name and image. Now, this is an interesting development. I have heard stuff randomly behind the scenes about this with like legal proceedings, but it honestly could just come from this twit longer itself as I've yet to see any real solid evidence of legal action. If people are slandering him, then, you know, hopefully he sues them and he and he gets, you know, some money out of it or he just gets them to shut the f up. Uh, but if people aren't slandering him, then obviously him suing them would be bad because then they get tied up with a millionaire YouTuber in court, right? But once again, from the sidelines, as a bystander, as someone who's not involved, I just don't know exactly what happened here. We don't have enough information. I don't have access to, to all of the logs. I just don't, you know? The information is relatively limited, I would say. My heart goes out to the actual victims of and grooming, and again, I'm extremely sorry that it took as long as it did for me to reply. I want to make sure I included everything. This is all the information I have, but like past situations involving me, I know people are going to run with whatever fits the narrative best. If this isn't enough, at least we are on the same level of knowing. I hope everyone gets some rest and tries to step back from everything, as it can all be super overwhelming. This is definitely what I need to do, and I need to sleep for the first time in 10 days. It was amazing meeting so many of you at TwitchCon, and I'm trying my best to stay positive. Now, in the Amanda section, Dream says she was 18 when they talked. She says she was 17, but 
But if you look at what she claimed her age was publicly in 2021, where she turned 17 in February, then she would have been 16 years old when they started talking in that nice little fan message DM, which would change things. Another update will come when Amanda posted her supposed driver's permit, which shows that she was born on February 17th, 2004. Now, I guess this could be faked. It, it is possible. But I guess for the sake of argument, let's just assume it's real, right? So this moved the goalpost from meeting them when she's 17 and then she turns 18 at some point to meeting her when she's 16 and then turns 17. And when she's 17, they apparently supposedly talk about meeting up, according to her. Well, if he did something illegal, shouldn't you go to the cops? Well, according to her, she actually did. Doing what's right, leave me alone, not using Twitter till I have everything I need figured out, could be days, be patient. I do not have the power or physical evidence to do anything right now, it's a process. Thank you all for advising me to do what's right. And this is the last update we got from this girl, full stop. But we did get a response from Dream. In the midst of everything, he dropped another twit longer. And then the final update here on this particular story is I guess like this other girl claims that Amanda like stole her story or something with like no proof or anything. Not really sure what to make of this, honestly. If you can't tell already, this entire thing is an absolute mess from front to back. People arguing, responding poorly, contradictions with age, misinformation being spread, honestly, on both sides, right? And beyond that, because this is the insane Minecraft stand community, the most vocal people will exaggerate or lie about what actually happened. Not even the people involved, but just like bystanders on Twitter who want to be involved because they're 14 sitting in study hall and have nothing else to do. And you may notice that I'm being kind of wishy-washy here with my opinion, and that's absolutely by design. Up until this point, so many details could change. I don't know when Dream knew this Amanda girl's age. The OxyClean person sort of had nothing, but this other girl who claims her stuff is way more damning doesn't have a DM that I've seen where he says, hey, you're 16, I'm in my 20s. What What's up? I don't see that anywhere. And according to her, at one point at least, in her Twitter bio, because she lied about her age to use Twitter, it said she was 18 when she actually wasn't. So I just don't really know what to believe yet, you know? I don't know when Dream knew what he knew, or if he knew anything. And so I must operate under the assumption that what is not proven to be true is not true. That's just how it works. Innocent until proven guilty. Now, if there is a real police investigation of some kind, then there also may be another reason why we haven't gotten more information or messages, because it's all sealed up, because they want to do the case right right and not F it up, right? Public involvement can hurt cases like this sometimes. And that is a real possibility. But for now, we just don't know. And to be honest, at the same time, given that the police have yet to pursue the Giggly Goon Clown case and a lot of other cases of predatory behavior online, they're not always the fastest to act on stuff like this. And so as a result, it may be difficult to get anything out of them, even if Dream is guilty. Now you may be asking, but Tom, why are you talking about all this now? All this drops in 2022. Now it's 2020 freaking three. Why the video? Well, all this has come back up due to some Twitter shenanigans and Dream is defending himself again and honestly having like a little bit of a public meltdown, which Dream, to be honest, bro, like you're not doing yourself any favors right now by, by tweeting and like riling these people up. You need to just like shut the f*** up and like make one video response and then just like not talk about it again. This is what the most intelligent minds of our micro celebrity generation are doing. People who are far more provably disgusting and guilty than Dream have done that and been fine. So like Dream, bro, like just make your video, okay? Make your f***ing video, get your, get your story straight and then that's it. So as far as I can tell, it starts with this clip from Spark Dahlia on Twitter, which has a video of Dream on stream saying this girl he messaged had in her bio that she had graduated high school. So he assumed she was of age when he messaged her and on top of that, he says, even if she was a minor, it wouldn't matter. First of all, I didn't know she was a minor because she had a, something about her graduating high school in her bio on Instagram. And on top of that, um, it doesn't matter that she was a minor. Like Snapchat's a messaging platform. Now, a lot of people are saying this clip sounds bad, but this is out of context, okay? Firstly, he could have said way more than this that could totally change the meaning of what he said here. And secondly, if Dream was 19 messaging a 17-year-old girl, even though technically she's a minor, that's not an age gap I'm particularly concerned about. They're two years apart. Who cares. But keep in mind, I don't know the age of the girl in question or the age of Dream at the time. I'm just posing a hypothetical here. So then this person also quote tweets their own tweet saying, let's get hashtag drop Dream trending again. I don't care anymore. There's no way someone who goes live on stream and admits to doing such horrible things, admits to grooming someone, has not yet been deplatformed and faces no consequences. And so with this tweet, everyone gets riled up and calls Dream a groomer again. But of course, he responds. Not with a video, like he should, but with a twit longer on, on, on Twitter. Actually, it's not really a twit longer, guys. This is just a giant 
fucking tweet. Thanks for the character limit increase, Elon. Shout out Musk Enterprises for aiding Dream in, in writing his, his, his Twitter essays. Tesla still sucks, though. Thousands of likes on this is crazy. Using a 10-second clip to purposefully spread misinformation and lie is so disgustingly vile. I did not admit to doing horrible things at all. Literally the exact opposite of what happened. Here's summarized context for those who want to see what was actually said. No one was groomed. She lied about taking legal action. She lied about providing more proof later and lied about almost everything that was shared. It's been over a year since she said she would provide proof. I have and will be releasing the Snapchat data, Instagram logs, Twitter history, and timeline, which proves by a matter of fact that she deleted certain messages messages, lied and hid context, and that she never provided these easily obtainable logs because they contradicted some of her own words. I primarily used Snapchat as a messaging platform before I revealed my face because I was hiding what I looked like and everything else about my life IRL. I had many people from online games and content creation on it and used it for everything, so I didn't look at Snapchat as a big deal. I changed my mind on that before this even happened and made a private Snapchat for close friends. Her story contradicts itself many times, with her saying that we planned a local meetup while I was faceless and would literally leave the state just to go to the dentist and hadn't shown my face to even my best friends yet. With her liking and replying to tweets of mine and defending me from criticism, only a week before she posted about how horrible I was. With her not posting a single screenshot, video, log, or any bit of evidence of anything she claimed other than that we had a friendly conversation. With her DMing me from her IRL Instagram, with no fan posts and only her real life info, deleting posts, and actively hiding that she was currently a big parasocial fan. On top of that, she had something in her bio insinuating that she was an adult, so I had no reason to even think about her age. Nothing inappropriate it happened, so I wasn't looking into whether she was 17.9, 18, or 30. It doesn't even matter if she wasn't an adult because we were just having short, friendly conversations. She wasn't groomed, and we weren't even friends. I even provably tried deleting her from my Instagram inbox multiple times, but Instagram doesn't let you unless you block someone. I did not reply in detail publicly, besides denying the accusation immediately at first, due to waiting on her claim that she was taking legal action and providing more proof and advice from my lawyer. She never did either. I did not lash out publicly in frustration because I had to be very careful and think about how my response could impact future victims' willingness to come forward against an abuser. I'll be going into more organized detail later in a video on one of my channels with far more than this and just uploading all of everything for anyone to go through. But there's a lot to say and it's a delicate thing to talk about in general. So Dream finally went nuclear. He calls her a liar, says she contradicts herself, and claims that she lied about taking legal action. He also says nothing inappropriate happened, so he wasn't looking into whether or not she was of age because at that point, at least, nothing, nothing weird's going on. He also says that a video is coming out, which I, personally and f***ing hype for because that video may finally put all this to bed. Whether that makes Dream look good or bad, I just want to know the truth of what happened. I've been hearing about these allegations for, I want to say since like, since like 2020, maybe 2021. It's been two or three years and I keep hearing whispers about it and rumors and I see a video now and then, but like nothing definitive. And even now I can't be definitive about it. So I just want to know and hopefully he can put this to bed. He also got supportive tweets from people like Sapnap, the base 4chan king who has decided to stream over at Kick despite the whining from the soy boy beta tubbo, okay? The majority of Sapnap's demographic is people in communities such as LGBTQIA+, um, younger demographic and stuff like that. I feel like this platform is not a safe place to be openly trans, not a safe place to be openly Jewish, not a safe place to be black, for example. It's insane. I feel like it's great that you want to spearhead that positive change, but also with such a large and powerful voice you have and so much good you can do with that voice. It's best that you're more responsible with where you want to bring your community and you have a responsibility to protect them. And bad boy Halo also chimed in saying, I'm glad you are talking about it as I know you were advised not to. I watch your stream and it's important for people to not clip things out of context. You do not help victims when you do that. I hope you release the vid so people can see what you've shown us behind the scenes. So I guess behind the scenes, Dream has been like showing some of his friends uh, stuff regarding this situation, including bad boy Halo. And um, they seem convinced that, you know, it exonerates him, right? And now there's like this adult fan of Dream who he was gonna like fly out to, you know, get his sucking on and she's talking about it for some reason and it's crazy because he never groomed me but i sure as hell got his private snapchat around the same time those girls did and we flirted for a while and then he ghosted me so like seeing people say the snapchat wasn't real pissed me off but i didn't want to get involved well now you are involved i guess i guess you did want to get involved like what what is even your story okay like what do you have to add to this situation <laughs> you're just jumping on the pile like literally all this girl added is like that i guess he has a private snapchat i mean to be fair this girl like never even claimed to be victimized i guess she just wants to support 
who she believes is the is the true victims and that's her prerogative but the only thing she's added here is that dream has a private snapchat i guess which is like not that surprising that's all we've learned from her and i guess previously she agreed to suck and and all but then he he ghosted her which um owned <laughs> you got owned but this story doesn't stay boring here okay with just dreams response no 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 it doesn't stay with just jay sneed and feed okay no we get way more so this furry person named midas actually i don't even know if they're a furry but they have like a dog so we're calling them a furry <laughs> entertainment purposes made a tweet showing dreams second response to grooming allegations versus his response to stealing an idea in minecraft and the point here is to show like oh well dream doesn't care about important things like serious issues he just cares about minecraft right that's the intention of the tweet, I guess. So Dream says, I learned my lesson. People on Twitter don't want to read a book. I also talked about it for 40 minutes on stream today and mentioned a more detailed video summary. Would you like me to make a documentary instead? Do you care about the truth or hit tweets? And then Dream further goes on to claim that this person is like a stalker who showed up to his meet and greet and then got kicked out by security. So Dream calls him like a crazy stalker who follows him in real life. And then this this Midas furry dog person. Are they? Oh, hold on. Are they actually a furry? Oh, they have they have Overwatch, I think. Is that Overwatch? They're, they're definitely a furry then. W Riz. Actually, L Riz. This Midas person says, I showed up because I was at VidCon and my friends wanted to go in. It's not stalking that you happen to be at the same con I was planning on going to. And I guess their friend was backing them up to say, you mean the meet and greet where he did nothing wrong was pushing me in my wheelchair? Stalker behavior. When we were at VidCon for Ludwig and others and happened to walk by. Pushing my wheelchair. Oh, so they're like, listen, this furry's like the good guy. They pushed someone in a wheelchair. So they couldn't do, they couldn't do any wrong. But in fairness, like you guys could have clearly predicted this. Obviously, Dream doesn't want to be around someone in a wheelchair. He's got 10 million subscribers. Ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. That's a joke, by the way. Okay. Slash J. That's meta irony right there. No, I was serious, though. Actually, there's no cap at all. Um, I don't want to f***ing smell someone in a wheelchair. I'm kidding. Joking. Meta irony. Joking. Comedy special. This is my comedy special. I'm Shane Gillis. Dude, my Uncle Danny sneaks grilled cheese sandwiches into restaurants. This is my comedy special. So to mess with all these people, Dream posts this TikTok where he pulls out this shirt. And on it, it says, I love minors. All right, let's see what was sent into my P.O. box today. Looks like a T-shirt. Okay. All right. Uh, what does it say? And then everyone calls him disgusting, says he's misusing his platform. Now, to be honest, I kind of hate everyone involved here. Like, Dream's definitely a weird person, as all YouTubers are. He's even weirder, I think, on average, but I have yet to see definitive proof of his evilness, so I'm sort of abstaining from really going in here because I just don't know. Meanwhile, the other side is using the term platform and words like power imbalance, and they're all, like, 17, which, to be honest, just makes steam come out of my ears because I hate children and I hate Twitter, so <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't really know, like... Am I supposed to be on these people's side? They can't even get their story straight. And if you're watching me, guys, you know the people we're discussing, okay? Lots of furries, lots of Minecraft stands, some other communities overlapping in there, and uh, it's just not my cup of tea, it's not my swag. I'm on some other you know what I'm saying, Unk? You know, yeah, you know, yeah, you know, yeah, you know. The amount of people spreading the intentional lie that I admitted to gooning someone is so sad. Hundreds of tweets spreading that complete lie for likes. It's so harmful to real victims. I did not goon anyone, and I've never said otherwise. Dream making a I love minors joke when you have serious grooming allegations against you is a different type of disgusting behavior, but not unexpected from him. Him saying, and I quote, this isn't drama, this is serious stuff with serious implications, then post this? Yeah. I mean, the thing is, like, if the claims are real, like, if these girls are telling the truth, and he did do something horrible, then it is gross. But if it's not, then it's not gross. In Dream's mind, if he didn't do anything wrong, then this situation is, like, it is serious because it threatens his career, but it's way less serious than people like the lore on Twitter think it is, obviously. If you think you're being falsely accused by liars, then obviously you're going to want to make fun of them because you, you find them ridiculous, right? Now, keep in mind, in case it seems like I'm defending this dude, I'm not. I just want to see more evidence before I jump to the conclusion that he's a downright disgusting, detestable person. If he did, believe me, he's going to be right up there in the Minecraft Degenerates Part 2, okay? Imagine the thumbnail. I'm literally drooling thinking about it right now, okay? I really am. Dream Soy Wojak next to LCP text. Oh my god, I'm hype. 10 million views um ad revenue um 
it'd be amazing. You know, I would double stack the ads at the front of the video. So they're like unskippable, <laughs> which is worse than like cancer. But uh, that's what I would do. But uh, like, I just don't have evidence. I don't have proof. I don't know. If Dream is going to make a video and he claims he's going to debunk it, obviously I'm going to wait to see like what's in there before I do anything, right? It may not be real. So don't get your panties in a twist. Let's see what he says in the video. Let's see what the subsequent information is. And then we'll come to a conclusion together collectively as a squad. Okay, Tom Darkers, listen, if you're out there, you're watching, if you're enjoying, we're going to come to a conclusion as a squad once we have all the information because that's what we do we're just smarter than the rest of the internet yeah <laughs> Dream posted one last Twitter thread about this as well, where he says this. I've been harassed for almost a year due to a false accusation right after my face reveal. This person publicly said they'd be pressing charges and posting proof, but it could take days and then went silent for a year and never did either while I waited and waited. Someone that less than a week before the accusation was liking and replying to my tweets positively, deleted DMs and called people doubting her jealous that I didn't want them instead, admitted they considered lying about their age to try and DM me weeks before they turned 18. This one false accusation turned into Dream talk to kids. There's tons of accusations. Dream never denied it. Dream was exposed fiddling kids and so much worse. All due to past parasocialness that yes, I can be to blame for. I talked on stream about how I'm going to make a detailed video with logs, screenshots, and evidence and gave some bullet points and it got completely clipped out of context and spread somehow as the lie that I admitted everything. He may not have sexed anyone but grooming is just messaging someone underage and he admitted she DM'd him. And then digging into my sex life or my relationship history with only people older than me is such a shit show and I get it. I'm the cringe Minecraft guy that was fat, that makes bad music, that's from Florida and has said offensive things, that cheated, that's stubborn and an asshole and racist and homophobic, and doesn't manage his rabid fans, manipulates, etc. But don't let you thinking that I'm bad either way make you stomp all over real victims' future stories or devalue what grooming is to make sure I fit the definition. And I know I'm not convincing anyone on Twitter that's made their mind up, just feels right to share finally. Honestly, if my advice means literally anything, um, Dream, if you're up there in heaven and you can hear me, just stop tweeting. Make the video. In the end, Twitter is a cesspit of cancer for actual discourse. It doesn't fucking mean anything. If you make a video, you can set the record straight. You can get the information out there if you are truly innocent. And then you can really actually put this to bed because people will have a clear resource to point to from you that shows it all. As for the victims, if they have more proof, take it to the cops. And when the time is right, put all the info out in an easily digestible format where everyone can see everything. Because so far, it's been an absolute mess to comb through. A mess of deleted accounts, tweets, half based stories of what actually went down, misinformation. I just want to know the truth. I really do. And on that note, until next time, stay skibbity, stay phantom, shout out to Ronald Riz, eat your vegetables, and uh, I'll see you guys all in the next video tomorrow. Bye. And be sure to become a member. For $5 a month, they get the members only podcasts and exclusive videos that only members get. Thanks so much for your support. No,